Psalms 119 verses 73 to 80. Yield. I don't perfectly know how to pronounce these completely, but best I can. This from 73 to 80 is a testimony through the word. Thy hands have made me and fashioned me. So the Bible takes for granted that God is the creator and evolution is not so. God didn't create palm scum and from palm scum go up the ladder to here we are today. It says that God made me and fashioned me. Fashion is like a mold, a design. God designed and fashioned us to be men, not animals. There's a difference between the animals and a difference between man. Paul says there's a difference between the, the terrestrial and the you got to understand that and you got to know that God is God and God is the creator. You can't be an evolutionist. And they have a thing out there, theistic evolution, where you know God did it, then he set it off. Well, that's not what the Bible says. And if you proclaim to be saved and in that, you're violating what the Bible says. And we're in the chapter that is the longest chapter in the Bible, and it's all about the Word of God. How can you say that God created and then went off, and then you read a verse like, For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. How do you get theistic evolution in that? All right, now that you made me, God, give me understanding. You can't get understanding from, from evolution, but you can get it from God, the creator, that I may learn thy commandments. What commandments does evolution give? To do right and to have a longevity of life and to get along with the fellow men. Nothing. But God gives us commandments on what we sh should do and what our conduct is, that we may please Him. That they that, that they that fear Thee will be glad when they see Me, because I have hoped in Thy Word. Titus two thirteen. The blessed hope is the Lord Jesus Christ. John one one. Second John. Your hope today is to be Jesus Christ. If that is not your hope, then you have missed the point. I hope someone will get saved. Okay, that's good. Did you witness to him? Yes. Then you did your job. I hope to make a million dollars. What's a million dollars going to do? Yeah, we would love to see a loved one get saved, but our hope is for the Lord Jesus Christ to come. You can't put your hope in, oh, I want my children to grow up right. If your children are saved and the Lord Jesus Christ comes, they will have no more sorrow, pains, and anything else that you've gone through. The day that the Lord Jesus Christ comes, Titus 2.13, your sin life is gone. Now there's one thing, the tears will not be wiped away. That's not the Revelation 21. But your sins are gone. This life on this miserable planet is gone. You don't come back until Jesus Christ gets rid of the wicked. As he sits on the horse. And you're behind him. By the time you touch the earth, the wicked will be slain by the sword that comes out of his mouth. Have you hoped in the word? And the word according to the Bible is the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, uh, he told the disciples in Acts chapter 1 or that he's coming. Well, the angel told him, as as he's gone, as he's gone, he shall return. 
It says in Titus uh, chapter 4 that he's coming to get us. That's the word. That's the prophecy. That's what you're hoping. I know, O oh Lord, that thy judgments are right. Do you? Do you know what God judges is right? For he is holy and a righteous judge. Now watch what he says. That ain't, that ain't the end of the verse. And that thou in faithfulness has afflicted me. The psalm is saying, I stand guilty before you, God, and the judgments that you put in my life are right. Paul said, rejoice evermore, in everything give thanks. When God afflicted you because you, you are guilty, do you thank him as a loving father? That he loves you enough to chastise you? The Bible says in Proverbs, and we'll get there eventually. If you don't chastise your children, you don't love them. I don't care what you say. I'll go by what the Bible says. Here is a guy that wrote that I have been afflicted and God is right. Let I pray thee, thy merciful kindness, be for my comfort, according to thy word, unto thy servant. He's seeking mercy, which is proper, and kindness. Don't give me my fool's due. And there are times that God does not give us the foolish that we deserve. He is a merciful God. You know, people will say, well, God, you know, why did he cause this tornado? Why did he go blah, 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 blah? And my question is to you, that righteous God that sits in heaven, why did he do everything to you that was your due charge? Why did he show you mercy? If God is so cruel, how many times in your life can you name that you almost died? And why didn't God just do it? Why are you still... You know, it's amazing that anybody will live to their teenage years. Of all the things that kids do innocently that is ought to be deadly and get out of it. And an atheist says there's no God. And I just a few things running through my head right now. If it wasn't for the mercy of God, I'd be in a, dead. Stupid things. You know what causes injuries? Stupidity. When you don't do what you're supposed to do. Usually when there's a work-related injury... There are rules for you to do, and you broke one of them rules. Somebody broke one of them rules. And somebody was injured. How many times have you seen in a grocery store you walk, there's that sign, you know, the guy's tripping, he's falling through the air. And you just keep on, how many times did you fall through the air? Yeah, but that sign says there's a fall hazard. Why didn't you fall down? You walked across it. The mercy of God. If it wasn't for the mercy of God, the hospitals, you, you would need more hospitals. And the Christian life that we are children of God, that God loves us, yes, he chastises us. But he does not chastise us as much as he should. 
Even a human father will stop at a chance, even though the Bible says in Proverbs, spare not for their crying. Let thy tender mercies come unto me, that I may live. For, I, for thy law is my delight. God grant me life and grant me to know your law so I can live longer. You know, the big ten commandments. And Paul backs it up for a Christian and says, If you don't honor your mother and father... You will expect a short life. Don't go eating canola bars. Don't go being a health nut. Don't go to the exercise gym. Because the Bible proclaims that if you don't honor your mother and father, your life will not be long. And the writer of this psalm right here is saying, Lord, let me know that. Lord, let me know if I commit adultery in the Old Testament that there is no sacrifice and I die and go to hell. That as Israel as a nation now, when they look upon a king, they see King David and realize that he committed that sin with the mercies of, of God and the tender greatness of God that he, he gave David the tender mercies that David would not die and go to hell for his adultery and murder. But there was a penalty that David lost four of his sons because of that mess, because of that sin. And when the family speak about King David and father gathers his family together and they speak of the Bible, of the Old Testament and the laws and the ways and the testimonies of the Jewish families and they bring to pass what happened to King David to realize that there is a penalty for sin. You see it through Genesis and all through the Old Testament. There are penalties for sin. That's why we have the Old Testament. Paul says it is an example. Are we under the law? No, we're not. But if we did not live out the law, if we did not do some of the things in the law, we would be just as worse as the heathen. We would be a terrible testimony of Jesus Christ. And we know what God expects and what God doesn't expect. Can you find anywhere in the Bible, for this day and age, about tattoos written in the New Testament? No. You gotta go run to the Old Testament. Okay, yes, you gotta go run to the Old Testament. But what does God say about it? He doesn't speak clean or nice about it. He does not approve of it. So when you deal with somebody on the street, oh, I'm a Christian. Well, how do you know you're a Christian? See my tattoos? Where do you get that? There's nowhere in the scriptures that is permitted. In the same verse you find with all these, these, these things they're putting in their bodies. It says print no marks. It says, you know, cuttings. Don't make no cuttings. Of, you got to make a cutting in the flesh to put this, this junk you're putting in your body. And usually those things are done by a tattooist. And yet there are Christian tattoos out there saying they're doing it for the word of God. And they know where the Old Testament scripture is. The law says that you're to build a battlement around your roof of your house. Now, do you need to do that? No. What lesson do we get about that from that lesson? You're to do what you to do on your property to make sure if somebody does come across on your property, they won't be injured or harmed. Even though they don't belong on your property, you're to make sure they, they will be kept safe. It says the Old Testament, when you build a hole, put a, put a cover around, put a barrier around so people don't fall in. That's, that's not going to save my soul, but that's going to save someone from a lot of pains and aches and save, save me from a lawsuit.
Thy law is my delight. It's written by God. Let the proud be ashamed. Okay, here is proud. That is not a Christian that's never gone. And anytime I see that and read it and it's illustrate for your learning, I'm going to tell you that is not God. There is no pride with God. For they, do, they dwelt perversely with me without a cause. There is no reason for them to be perverse to this person. There is no reason for them to be perverse to a Christian. Yet, but in their pride, they are. Our president today, President Obama, has a lot of pride in his position as the president of the United States. He has so much pride that he thinks he can overrule the law and say, hey, listen, I'm going to do what I do. I don't care what Congress has to say. And then he does reverse. And then the Supreme Court has got to step in and say, well, you overstepped your boundary lines. But I will meditate in thy precepts. Just because I'm dealt perversely, just because thing, people do things against me, I'm not going to stop being a Christian. I'm not going to give up. I'm going to meditate on the word of God. I'm going to think the same thing happened to Jesus. The same thing happened to Jeremiah. They threw Jeremiah into a pit with goo that he just sunk down in. Can you imagine all the snickers on the complaints that Noah got? Abel was killed by a religionist. Not a time to quit. Matter of fact, as these days go on and on to the Lord Jesus Christ come and buckle that armor that God's given us, Ephesians chapter 6, buckle it on and keep it on and keep going. And read what Paul writes in 2 Timothy chapter 4 about his departing and earning a crown. You know, you can earn a crown by hoping in the Lord Jesus Christ, verse 74. That's it. How I forget which crown that is. But it's one of the crowd. How hard can it be for you to hope the Lord Jesus Christ come? I read in my Bible that it says that there was a place where God spoke and they said it thundered. So every thunderstorm, I expected my name to be called. When I see cloud formation in the skies, and I'm just like, yep, because it says in Thessalonians, we shall be gathered. That may be the time. Imagine one great thunderstorm we get. I'm sitting here thinking about the, and next thing you know, the voice comes. I got a crown. I've got a crown. Just listen for my voice. And Christians will say, how stupid. You don't know your Bible. All right, what if there is no thunderstorm? What if it's a perfectly cloudless sky, and I'm sitting down, and the Lord calls me home? I want him. I desire him. I get a crown. How hard was that? Meditate. Meditate in a word. This chapter is all about the word. Think about the promises that God has given you every day. Every sin, 1 John 1, 9 says you can just you can give it to God. You, you can repent and get right and put it under blood, and he'll never ever remember it. 1 John 1 9. And your pain and misery, God says in, in Corinthians that he will never give you a way to, I mean, he'll never give you such a thing to break you, and he'll give you a way to escape. Meditate on the, on the precepts. The Bible says pray without ceasing. Maybe that night you can't sleep. Maybe God wants you to pray. 
You start praying for people. And maybe God said, okay, once you get that name that he wants you to pray for, maybe he'll give you sleep. And joyful and restful sleep. There may be a reason. Get up. Maybe maybe something's smoking in the kitchen. Maybe one of the children is about to do something that is deadly. Maybe God wants you to get up and check something out. Delight in his meditate in his precepts. Let those that fear thee. Those that who want to do right. Turn unto me. The only friends I want to have is those that fear you, Lord, and want to do right. Everybody else can go away. I don't care who they are. I don't care what position they are. If you don't want what the Lord wants, if you don't want if you don't love his word, because it says those that have known thy testimonies. That's only through Genesis of Revelation do you know the Lord's testimonies. You know, you know some of those you want to keep away from? Well, Jesus, when he walked on the water, walked on ice patties. Well, that, that's not in the Bible. You need to keep away from him. Well, if you pray to Mary, that, 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 that's not the Bible. That's not knowing your testimony. i got to stay away from you. Well, Jesus isn't God and God isn't Jesus. I need to stay away from you, Second John. I don't want your Savior. I don't want Jesus Christ. I don't want to believe him. Then you know what? You don't fear him. Get out of my life. Go. Goodbye. See you. Well, if we study, you know, our, uh, pirate and kids clubs and stuff like that's not the Bible. Get away from me. Clowns and, and entertainment and dunking the, the people in the past, that's not the Bible. Get away from me. You get a brother in law, hey, did you see this in the Bible over here? Check this out. You know, maybe David Goliath, he'll show you something that he learned. Like, wow. That's someone to have love with. That's someone to be a brother with. That's someone to pray about. That's someone to be with. Brother, did you see what Jesus did over here? Brother, check out this verse I was reading the other night. What do you think about it? This is what I think. What do you think about it? Those are the ones you're to have company with. Hey, let me tell you about this door I knocked on the other day. Let me tell you about this atheist I met. Let me tell you about this guy that I gave in a gospel trap. That's someone to be friends with. Do you know God will judge you by your friends and the company that you were with? Wouldn't it be pretty amazing when you get the glory? As a born again Christian, you realize your friends are not in heaven because they never trusted your Savior? That'd be something interesting. Or you find out that your your friends in your life, Christians, and they and you get to heaven and there's no crowns on their heads. What are you gonna talk about? You ain't gonna talk about baseball. You ain't gonna talk about sports. You're not going to talk about drinking. You're not going to talk about shopping. You're not going to talk about the family uh, picnic. You're not going to talk. You're not going to talk about that stuff. But imagine getting to heaven with a group of people that you should be with. They're Christ honoring, Christ fearing. And they love the Lord and love the the, the 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 Bible. And you get up to heaven with them. They're, they're, you're wearing crowns, and here comes this guy who floats around. He says, "I want to thank you guys for what? Because you guys preached that word down in that place. I forget the name of that city. You preach it. You preach it. You preach it. Eventually, I got saved." By the, the tracks you give me, by the preaching you did. As a result, what you guys did, I got saved. And you just sit there and you, now you just talk about all the testimonies you had with the street ministry. 
and you joy and you rejoice and you have gladness in the Lord who saved you all and what you did for him. It's a lot better than wasting your money on how many lottery tickets hoping to get a fortune that God's not going to give you. If you wasted your money on I mean, I can't believe the lottery tickets today are up to 10 bucks or 20 bucks. It's not faithful with, with what God has given you. Now, let my heart be sound in thy statutes that I be not ashamed. Now, what is the reoccurring thing we keep seeing? What is sound? Sound means entire, unbroken, or a whole heart. There's the whole heart. In statutes. That I be not ashamed. When you see your works burn at the judgment seat of Christ, you'll be ashamed because it's unconfessed sin. When somebody comes up to you and they have a Bible answer and you can't answer it, you'll be ashamed. And it will make you go study your word more so when somebody asks me a question like that again, I will have the answer. And a shame can cause you to walk away from Jesus. Especially if you got pride. You could be put so down that it ain't worth living no more. Oh, you be yelled at me. Who do they think they're yelling at me? Christ was humbled. He was never ashamed. As he stood before Pilate with spit hanging off him and part of his beard being pulled. He was humbled. You know who was ashamed? Judas was ashamed of what he did. That he threw the money down and went and hung himself. Peter was ashamed when he denied the Lord three times when the Lord told him you were going to do it. And the Bible records that he left and whipped bitterly. And he was ashamed to have Jesus tell him three times, Peter, do you love me? He got a little annoyed. Lord, you know I love you. Told you three times. As he looked down at that fire at Jesus' feet with the fire that Jesus started. For the fish, and okay, I know what you're talking about, Lord. Now, you're talking back there when I warm my hands with the fire with the world. You know, when you warm your hands with the fire with the world, Jesus Christ will proclaim before you each and every time you did that Did you love me? Did you love me? Well, who were you with? Do you love me? How many times are you going to have to get an account that this verse says your company? Testimony through the word. What is your testimony through the word? Are you worldly or are you godly? You can't walk both. Testimony through the word is your conduct on what God expects through the word. That God made you. And you're to go to that creator for understanding and learning 
of what God expects from you. That those that fear thee will hope in thee in the word. No one that fear, fears not God doesn't want the Lord. There are Christians out there who don't want the Lord Jesus Christ. Matter of fact, if he were to come, they would mess up their life. You will be ashamed when that happens. Paul says that there are even people in his time who are preaching that the resurrection already happened. And you are to acknowledge that God is a righteous judge even when you are guilty. You are to seek the testimony of the word that God is merciful and kind and will comfort you. Life will come by God through his tender mercies. Pride and proudness will be ashamed. Wait a minute. Let the proud be ashamed. For they had dwelt perversely. Let my heart be sound in thy statutes that I may that I be not ashamed. So in other words, if you are put to a shame before the Lord Jesus Christ, you are just like a sinner. You're just like a man in pride. You know better. Their shame will come at the great white throne judgment. How dare you be likened to a lost sinner? How dare you? How dare you sleep in Satan's mattress? And then turn around and say you love the Lord. When you are likened to the wicked who are not saved and who do not fear the Lord. The testimony through the word is what your conduct and your character is. Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God his Son not sparing sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home.